When you hear the word Disneyland, what comes to your mind first? Great adventures, rides and shows symbolized by the Disney characters, and Sleeping Beauty Castle and whatnot, isn't it? And not to forget the Spooky Mansion, which is most likely the first attraction that comes to mind when you think of haunted rides at Disneyland. But for decades, people have been saying that the Matterhorn is the one that is truly haunted. Do you have any idea about it? Also, it appears that there is a tragic true story that lies behind the ghost myth. It all started when it was just a few days into the new year 1984. Dolly Regina Young, then 48 years old and originally from Fremont, was in Disneyland with five of her friends from Arizona when the incident led to her death occurred. But what exactly happened? The Fremont Argus noted that Dolly Regina Young had been an Avon woman in the past and that she had been pleasant and incredibly well-liked by all of the children who lived in her neighborhood. At approximately 3.30 in the afternoon, Dolly and her pals climbed aboard a bobsled that was waiting for them at the base of the Matterhorn. Dolly sat all by herself in the very back of the room. During that brief period, the Skyway gondola continued to go past the attraction, transporting visitors through a gap in the mountain. When Dolly's bobsled was about halfway back down the mountain, a family of three from Idaho, consisting of a father and two teenage daughters, was traveling through the Matterhorn simultaneously. Helen Pishner, who was 19 at the time, was the one who reportedly yelled first, according to the police reports. Her father, Don, recalls her saying, Oh my God, someone fell out of that ride, and he was shocked. Helen reported to the police that she remembered seeing a female bouncing on her back on the tracks shortly after it was presumed that she had fallen off of her sled. Helen thought briefly that it appeared as though Dolly Young was attempting to stand up. The subsequent ride appeared around the bend 33 seconds after Dolly had fallen out of the bobsled she was riding. Don Pishner yelled to his girls to turn away so they wouldn't see what was happening. There was a family from British Columbia riding in the bobsled that was approaching. They were confused for a second and assumed that the body that was lying between the two parallel tracks might perhaps be a prop. However, as they got closer, the awful reality of the situation dawned on them. Dolly was struck on the head and the torso by the bobsled, which caused the horrific decapitation that instantly resulted her death and the bobsled becoming wedged on top of her body. After detecting that a bobsled was unable to move, the technology for the ride immediately turned off that section of the ride. A worker became aware that something terrible had occurred after hearing each of these things simultaneously. He ran up the mountain as quickly as he could and found the terrifying scene. During his dash back down to get help, he came across two more actors from the production, and he cautioned them to avoid looking. As soon as the police and emergency medical personnel arrived, Dolly was declared dead on the spot. Detectives in Anaheim have started an inquiry into the matter. They moved rapidly to eliminate the possibility of suicide and criminal activity before focusing on the seatbelt. The officers who responded to the call observed that Dolly's seatbelt was unbuckled and she was lying on the unoccupied seat next to her. According to what Detective Carl Martin said to the LA Times, this means it could have been anyway. Her belt might have slipped into the seat if she stood up, or if she might have been sitting on it if she had been standing up. Disney officials stated that there was no way that Dolly Young could have left the beginning of the ride with her belt undone. As part of the standard operating procedure, cast members were required to check visitors twice to ensure they were properly secured. David Tuttle, an Anaheim police investigator, conducted interviews with witnesses and determined that Young's death was accidental. Tuttle was quoted as saying to the media, it could be that it will never be determined what happened. Surprisingly, there was not a single governmental agency that was authorized to oversee the safety of amusement park attractions. The United States Consumer Product Safety Commission had its authority to inspect rides at stationary parks, such as Disneyland or the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, taken away by Congress two years prior. Only the Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA was allowed to conduct inspections, but only in the context of employee safety, not guest safety. Therefore, like most other amusement parks around the country, Disneyland was left to self-regulate. The Matterhorn resumed its normal operations the day after the terrible accident it had been involved in the day before. Officials at Disneyland stated that the attraction had been inspected for potential problems and that there had been none detected. 
therefore it was safe to operate. According to reports from the New York Times, the bobsled that struck Dolly Yum was taken out of service for additional testing, while the one that she fell out of, number 10, was placed back into use once it was repaired. According to the Los Angeles Times, she was killed after losing her balance and falling out of the ride, after which she was struck and killed by another toboggan. Since then, the area on the Disneyland side of the mountain where she was struck has been known as Dolly's Dip, and the amusement park staff swears that she still haunts the ride. One month after the incident occurred, in February 1984, Dolly's husband brought a wrongful death lawsuit against Disney for the amount of $5 million. He retained James Pocardo, a prominent attorney in the Bay Area, to act as the family's legal counsel. Bocardo came out swinging, criticizing two young men who worked at the attraction for being impressed with two gorgeous girls who were part of the party and neglecting to properly inspect Yum's belt. Disneyland officials have categorically disputed the charges made by Bocardo. According to Yum's husband, who spoke to the Associated Press, his wife was not a flippant or bold person. She was not a young child like some other passengers who would have stood up on the ride. According to a study in the Los Angeles Times, Disneyland defends approximately 50 malpractice cases each year and has great success in arranging settlements in the vast majority of these instances. A settlement was struck between the parties four years later, just as the Yum case's jury selection process was underway. However, a representative for Disneyland stated that the lawsuit was settled to the satisfaction of the Walt Disney Co., although none of the parties involved were allowed to divulge the specifics of the agreement. Kristen, who worked at the park from 1989 to 1995 as a ride operator, said that she could feel a supernatural presence when she was running the Matterhorn and that other employees had told her they had seen a ghost at work. She wrote in a blog post for Wander Wisdom, I worked on that ride for several years and never saw her, but I sure felt her. While working at the park, she had to walk the ride every day after it closed to look for lost and found items, which she hated. Every time I got a track walking shift, I felt uncomfortable, like someone was watching me, she wrote. I always thought it was Dolly, so I would say hi to her a lot. The worst parts of the ride were the big cavern in the middle and Dolly's dip, the spot where she died. In fact, it seemed like the work lights in the tunnel near Dolly's dip were always out. I don't think I've ever seen those lights work in the past six years. The unfortunate truth is that this is not the only deadly event ever on the Matterhorn. In the 1960s, a young man lost his life as a result of getting struck after standing up on a moving attraction while it was in motion. According to the Los Angeles Times reports, the amusement park has now modified the ride seatbelts. The seatbelts on the Matterhorn were modified after Yum was killed in the accident. Before 1985, belts were secured with a friction fastener which involved passing the belt through a buckle and then closing the buckle down on top of the belt. These were changed with a lap belt similar to those found in rides, which features a buckle that can be fastened into a receptacle. Officials from Disneyland informed the Times that the move had nothing to do with the disaster. Their previous provider had gone out of business, and they had transferred to a new one. These are the seat belts that are still in use on the trip at present. Since the passing of Dolly Young, there has not been a single instance of another deadly mishap on the Matterhorn.